This podcast includes information provided by the issuer and does not express the views of the interviewer. This podcast may also include forward-looking statements by the issuer that involve certain risks and uncertainties to its business. Because forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties, the issuer's actual results could differ from those indicated in this podcast. Welcome to the Planet Microcap Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and thank you all so much for the support and for tuning in. You can follow Planet Microcap on Twitter at Bobby K. Kraft. That's B-O-B-B-Y-K-K-R-A-F-T, and you're listening to episode 54. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to tweet at me or shoot me an email at rcraft at snnwire.com. And when you do get a chance, if you like what you hear, please rate and review Planet Microcap on iTunes. It really helps provide feedback for me and spread the microcap message. Now, before I continue with this introduction to this episode of the podcast, I wanted to take a moment to express the, our condolences from everyone here at SNN Incorporated uh, to those who were affected, to the families, the victims uh, from the terrible, terrible events that happened in Las Vegas on Sunday night. Our thoughts and prayers are with you all as well as everybody who is affected by any one of the natural disasters that have happened over the last uh, over the last month or so and i wanted to take a moment and and uh, express our thoughts and prayers with you all for this episode of the planet microcap podcast i caught up with chris lahiji as the founder of ld micro and the ld micro index chris hosts two conferences every year the ld micro invitational and the main event Chris and his team are about to embark on their 10th annual main event, and I thought it would be fun to catch up with them and discuss some of the things he's learned hosting what are now, as he describes, and I quote, industry events in the microcap space. I also wanted to hear his insights on what has been going on thus far in the microcap space for 2017, as well as his thoughts on what we can expect for the rest of the year. The LD Micro main event will be December 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Lux Sunset Boulevard Hotel located in Los Angeles, California. For more information, please visit www.ldmicro.com. Thank you again for tuning into episode 54 of the Planet Microcap podcast. Please enjoy my interview with Chris Lahiji, but first, a word from our sponsor. A comprehensive streaming of market data, research, and portfolio management application for you. QuoteStream is a real-time streaming quotes and research system designed for the day trader, retail investor, institutional investor, both new and old. QuoteStream offers low-latency, tick-by-tick data, advanced charting, comprehensive technical analysis, news, and research. With no software to install and no servers to maintain, QuoteStream is the ideal solution for you. Go to stocknewsnow.com and start your free 7-day trial. Click the quote stream banner in the header or real time quotes in the nav bar to get started building and managing your investments. For this episode of the Planet Microcap podcast, I have Chris Lahiji on the program. He is the founder of LD Micro and the LD Micro Index. Chris, welcome back to the Planet Microcap podcast. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back. So, for those who don't know, what is your background? So I started back in 2002 writing on companies that I I thought deserved more recognition. And um, Microcap was obviously one of the best places to start because you have all these small companies and they had virtually no coverage. And uh, as they say, timing is everything. So when I started, the markets were basically bottoming out. So I was fortunate enough to find a lot of things that were discarded uh, within the crafts that took, took place in 2000 and 2001. I wrote a book on it called The Best Companies No One's Ever Heard Of and then developed the site Lahiji.com. So through that, I've been fortunate enough to write for a newsletter um, and then start LD Micro. Mm-hmm. So... On that topic, what what is LD Micro, and uh, and also maybe a little bit about the LD Micro Index as well. So LD is probably at this point known for its two events: the Invitational in June and the main event in December. But we want to essentially be known as a tool 
for all the people that are interested in the smallest companies. And, you know, if you ultimately go to ldmicro.com, uh, we're very fortunate to say that we have several things that nobody else does. Um, the website houses the, the index, which we think is the most accurate measure of microcap. Um, it has it has the only live uh, news feed, and it also has a search tool that actually works. So people can ultimately navigate the universe universe around them. So we believe that over time, LD will be known as a reliable uh, information source for all those that want to get to uh, learn more about the smallest publicly traded companies. Um, but most people that you ask, they'll probably know us because of our because of our conferences. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually that's a perfect segue because the main reason I wanted to have you on today is because we're about two months away uh, from the 10th annual main event for LD Micro. You know, I, I've always wanted to ask you this, but like, uh, what have you learned over these last 10 years running conferences and, and being in this space? What I've learned, Bobby, is actually relatively simple. I don't like to host events. <laughs> um, I, that's what I've ultimately concluded. I'm not a very good event planner. That's one thing I've learned, too. Look, the, the consensus is your biggest variable is attendance, and it's the one that you can't control. So, uh, you know, over time, we've just Obviously, we've learned a lot of things, but one of the one of the big things is that we have to have a sense of community. So you know that between main events three and seven, it really kind of exploded in terms of size. And what many of your listeners may be surprised to hear is that we've been we've been deliberately trying to get smaller. So. Um, our take is you don't need a lot of people to have a great community. And what we're trying to do internally is try to make it in a way where everyone is one degree of separation from each other so that everyone ultimately knows everyone in the space. And that has basically pissed off a lot of people, um, you know, because it doesn't, it doesn't grant them access to the conference. So that's what we've been that's what we've been working on because you know look we're, we're not in it for size we're not in it for to showcase domination but you know when you have a thousand people attend and you do close to three thousand meetings that is a big number and that tells you that even though we are our size is 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 going down that the that the, the level of intensity and the level of activity for the existing people is going up. So as you know, in life, the word that gets tossed around a lot is balance. Uh, I don't actually think that that, you know, that word shouldn't even exist. There's no such thing as having a perfect balance. But our consensus is that we are trying to basically build something where everyone can ultimately help each other get to the same goal. And you know that's much, much more easier said than done. You know, with with all with technology and all the information, uh, you know that we have that's that's really readily available to us at at any time. You know, why do you think in person investor conferences are still important than in the micro cap space? You know, you've been around for ten years and now you have two events. You know, what's your take on that? So after fifteen years of being in this space, I mean. What I've always said is that the smaller a company is, the more important management becomes. And I'm pretty sure that uh, your listenership has probably looked at online dating and things like this, where someone may look really good on the screen, but when you meet them in person, it's not as advertised. So I think that, you know, an email, a phone conversation, and an in-person meeting um, are completely different. And I think that in-person meeting probably is about 70 to 80% of that equation. Mm -hmm. So this is really the only time. What I always say is that if you wanted to go and see 250 companies 
by yourself, it would take you a few months and a six-figure travel expense. Mm -hmm. But you have the capability to ultimately see these guys up close and personal, you know, and really get to kick the tires and kind of see them in their element. So my consensus is that the, the reason why there's so many conferences still is because people want to see it. They want to touch it. They want to feel it. They want to, they want to see mannerisms. They want to, you know, they want to get it, you know, they want to get it directly from the horse's mouth. But what, what LD has, has done where I think that nobody else has been able to emulate um, is that I believe that we have become mainstay, we, we become industry events. So it's really the only conference that you can see, you know, powers, the, the powers from all the segments of microcap. So whether it be research or investments or banking or advisory or legal, it just seems like people want to come because they know that other people's influence are going to be there as well. So when the shell side has a conference, they kind of invite their clients only. You know, or when, you know, or when Dave Mossberg from Three Part creates a conference, it's for my side only. Mm -hmm. For us, it is the entire industry. So you can get a very nice visual and a very nice snapshot of not just the companies that are attending, but what the hell is actually going on in this space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why so many people, you know, mark their calendars a year earlier. Because it gives them the chance to kind of get a world view of what is going on. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of have to at this point just to get a room at the Lux, I think, right? So just to kind of put it in perspective, <laughs> the, the Brentwood Inn, the Lux Sunset Bel Air, and the Hotel Angelino, from, from my understanding, are about 99% full. And then you have the Hotel Bel Air, which we, we kind of, you know, our room block is gone. We're trying to add to that. So, you know, the radius has increased because people want to stay close because they know that you leave L.A., it might take you five minutes to get there or five hours. So there's, there's actually a large contingency of people now that stay at the Brentwood Inn and they walk the mile together. And you might notice them at the conference basically wearing running shoes. So, you know, because dress shoes are not as fun, you know, as at mm -hmm. least travel long distances. We've always recommended having comfortable shoes because you're going to move a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in terms of what the hotels tell us, uh, you know, we've never filled up faster, which, which tells me that, you know, people want to come. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking of setting up a sub business of uh, just buying up all the properties around there just for December and airbnb it out. I think there there might be something there. A lot of guys Airbnb it, which I actually think is probably the smartest thing to do. Yeah. So what there's there's two people and uh, there's two people in particular that basically get groups of their friends and they basically rent out a house mm -hmm. and they've realized that it's the same price if not cheaper than all of them getting individual hotel rooms mm -hmm. and it's a lot more fun. So there is one house in particular where they basically walk. It's three blocks up from from the Lux. Mm -hmm. So I think it's smart. You know, I think people are ultimately using utilizing technology to its benefits. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, like I said, I mean, we if the Lux was twice the size in terms of hotel rooms, we'd still fill every single room. So Chris, what, uh, I mean, I know you can't go into detail on this, but I thought I'd ask, you know, do we have any surprises, uh, we can expect for the 10th? I mean, this is the 10th, you know, so you have to go big. Yes, there will be surprises. I, I think there'll be a lot of small surprises, um, you know, over the three days, uh, but you have to go big. You know, the, the way that I see it is, you know, I, I do not see myself doing this for a long period of time. So my goal is to make every event better than the one prior. Uh, and because it's a, you know, it's kind of a, a centennial mark for us, uh, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see and experience a couple things that you normally wouldn't. Um, but, but it's shaping to be that way. You know, a lot of it is just getting approval to do things. And a lot of it is just based off safety. 
So last year, someone wanted to have a huge party at a warehouse, uh, and we would not ultimately approve it because we did not deem it to be safe. Mm -hmm. So we could not give this organization our blessing. Mm -hmm. And it was it was the right decision. Mm -hmm. So safety comes first, and then, you know, obviously entertainment value, but you know us, we're gonna, probably going to do a lot of odd things. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the same entertainment budget as some of our other peers of the space, so Elton John will not be coming. <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, there's a few people in our space that I think uh, are musicians, so I'm sure they'll be able to, to fill the void. Um, oh, yeah, they'll just, yeah, they'll just show up unannounced, and, and we'll, <laughs> we'll have that. I mean, I think, I think on the music side, you're going to get a nice variation of, of, of several different genres during the, during the event. But a lot of it is also predicated on weather and, you know, you know, conditions and all sorts of things. So it's like you really don't know until the week before, you know, what you can, what you can truly deploy. Yeah. Let's move forward. I wanted to also kind of cover, um, you know, to get your thoughts on, on uh, microcaps in 2017, you know, kind of a reflection thus far. What's, what's been your impression? Uh, so, look, I mean, this has been probably the most dynamic year uh, since 2010, look, by the index has underperformed all the other main indices, okay? And you look at that as like, huh, that's interesting. Um, but I think that's unfair because you have two sides to this coin. One side is there is now a large contingency of companies that have basically decided that they don't want to be public anymore. And you call them, you know, there's probably been 50 or 60 buyouts in microcap this year, which is pretty large. And you call these executives and it's like, well, congratulations or, you know, good job. What was the catalyst of you ultimately selling? And there's a reoccurring theme that I have learned. One is that the management of the board realized that they weren't going to get the valuation that they deserved in the public market. And, of course, most executives will say that. The second thing that they say is much more interesting. The second thing is that they've received more than one bid. Mm -hmm. So that really kind of opens up, opens up the channels. So what's happening is that there's a large contingency of smaller private equity firms, family offices, alternative investment shops, that have been created in the last five, six, seven years, in the last decade, to basically buy, you know, smaller companies, whether they be public or private. Um, so what's happening is that these guys are raising money, and they're going to ultimately take that money and deploy it into, into, into certain investments. So we see that. We see the bigger companies basically saying that, hey, look, we're probably not going to grow organically that much, we're going to have to go through acquisition. And now that their stock prices are pretty flush, they're using that as real capital. Um, and you also have guys that are basically saying, look, we've been public long enough. You know, we think we should sell because there's a lot of interest. So our strategy for the last year has basically by companies that are announcing strategic alternatives because we think that the market is strong enough to ultimately give real bids. Now, unfortunately for you, me, and a few other names, the, the, the premiums that are being paid are, you know, non-existent. That's the thing that kind of upsets me. I think that the premiums that should be getting paid should be a little higher. Mm -hmm. So it tells me that, you know, there's not two or three or four bidders because obviously the prices would be higher. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that money flow is coming back. I mean, money flow is up year over year and Speculative names are really on fire. I mean, there are there are things that you know uh, you know that, that really going to trade. I mean, look at Isaiah. Isaiah is uh, you know Ted Danzig is the CEO. He's a good friend of mine. Isaiah didn't really trade this year, and this week it was you know the top uh, volume company for uh, you know four of the five days. Chris, I don't think we've never had that. And Chris, and Chris, for full disclosure, are you a shareholder or or uh, were a shareholder? Uh, for full disclosure, I am. I am. I am not a shareholder okay. of the company. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so the, the consensus is that 
you know, something like Isaiah, where, you know, it was it was one or two announcements. Uh, and that basically just lit, you know, lit a massive fire of the stock. I mean, the stock, I think, was from one to six. So you, we are we are seeing we are seeing this across the board in a lot of different days. So the speculative juices are back, and you know it's kind of frightening to see, but it's also wonderful to see because it tells you that there's interest. Mm-hmm. So you know my take is that you know there's still a large group of companies that you know people are interpreting as you know companies that really don't have any short-term catalyst are probably not trading much. And then if there's any news or announcement, there's a lot of money that's following it. Right. Uh, and then last but not least, you have a you have, you have a, a pretty you know pretty pretty big consortium of companies that are getting bought out, and you'll see it. You know you'll you I mean you yeah, and there's 24 consecutive weeks where we had a buyout of microcap. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's ever happened before. That's six months. Mm-hmm. So yeah. all these things are basically saying that the environment is robust. Um, you know, Reg A Plus is, you know, is, 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 I think, doing well. I think what needs to happen with Reg A Plus is we need to have one or two successes under people's belts where they made some, a shift out of money. Um, and that hasn't really happened yet. I mean, it, it, you know, there's developments there. Um, but, you know, anything to make it easier for companies to go public, anything to make it cheaper, uh, you know, anything with less red tape is, is something that the industry needs. Because I actually do believe that if you make it easy for people to have a real public investment vehicle, then, then there's going to be a lot more interest, as opposed to just staying mm-hmm. private. I still think the number one issue is regulatory. Mm-hmm. I always believe that. Yeah. You know, why basically go public and have to deal with regulatory stuff every three months when you can be private and have to deal with that nonsense once a year? Mm-hmm. So I mean, as long as that's there, as long as the costs are high, I don't see us expanding the universe anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I literally was just going to ask you about your thoughts on Reg A Plus because while there's been, you know, all this, all these buyouts and M and A going on, you know, it's been starting to slowly be replenished with these new public companies via Reg A Plus, and I mean. T- t- Chicken soup for the soul, you know. I mean, I'm not a full disclosure, not a shareholder, but you know, the right. biggest Reg A plus offering, you know, to date. I mean, these, this is, it's, you know, it's very interesting. I love the platform. Uh, I think it's gonna. I, I, I think it's gonna be part of the future. But remember, you're only as good as your deals. Mm-hmm. If people do not make money in microcap, there will be no interest in microcap. And if you look at the totem pole, there's only been a, a, a very small contingency of people that have been able to make money, even in all these shitty years. Mm-hmm. For for you to have a successful industry, everyone, everyone from the top all the way down to the bottom has to get paid. Mm-hmm. And that has not been the case. We're mm-hmm. slowly seeing that change. But conversely, too, you have the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P at all-time highs. Mm-hmm. And we still don't have anywhere near the same interest level. Mm-hmm. If anything happens to correct that, guess what? Microcap will also be significantly and negatively impacted. Mm-hmm. So, Chris, I'm going to say a phrase, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. Because I know you follow this. I've seen you post on, on, on the news uh, feed a couple times. Initial coin offering. What are your thoughts? I don't know enough about it to, to, to give you... Dude, I still don't even know what Bitcoin is. I just, I don't know, man. Look, look, Buffett, you know, you know, Buffett, yeah, you can criticize him all you want or you can praise him all you want. You know, some of the things that he said over his career are, you know, are beyond enlightening. You know, I'm probably not going to do anything I don't understand. Mm-hmm. So I, my take is the jury is still out. It's still relatively patient. Um, you know, my my consensus is, um, you know, um, I let, let, it, the jury is still still out on this, but I haven't mm-hmm. done enough on it to really even give you a an opinion. Dude, we gotta get we gotta get McAfee on here. You know, uh, I, I gotta talk to him about this stuff. I mean, uh, there's one, you know, from uh, he was your uh, special guest, I think, at last year's main event, right? Yeah. 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 Listen, ping him on Facebook. I think he'll uh, I think he'll respond a lot faster than you think. 
So Chris, for, for the rest of 2017, what, what are your thoughts on the microcap space? I think we'll see continued buyouts. Mm-hmm. I think that's inevitable. Uh, I think we'll have a couple of offerings that will really surprise people to the upside. Mm-hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, I think that it's going to be really choppy. I don't think that people are giving enough, uh, you know, uh, enough credence to all the stuff that's going on on a geopolitical scale. I think it's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. I think the hurricanes have been absolutely terrible. You know, it's basically it destroyed the Virgin Islands. It's destroyed Puerto Rico. Cuba was smashed just in parts of Florida. You know, I, I think that, that that recovery time is going to take a little bit. Uh, you know, it might take a year or two. Um, um, but all in all, I, I, I think that the consensus is going to be relatively strong, you know, heading into the new year. There's just a lot of money coming, you know, becoming available. I mean, think about it. Microcap is now one of the last frontiers where, you know, the investments haven't been as great as, as the other parts of the market. So we think that that money flow is, is going to, you know, continue to take place. And don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of undervalued companies out there that, you know, that, that, uh, that deserve a lot more credit. Mm-hmm. So Chris, where can our audience go and find more information about you and your upcoming event? LVMicro.com is usually the best place to start. It, there'll be a few articles that are going to be coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, but the, the consensus is you have to start you have to start thinking about it right now. I mean, we're 60 days in. We're very excited. And, you know, uh, like like everything, there's, there's going to be a few surprises that we're not going to make any mention of until you come to the conference. I'm not going to – look, my logic is this. If you've basically been on a six-hour flight and, you know, you left home and, you know, your wife is going to absolutely chew you up when you get back, you better believe you're going to have a great time. So, you know, somebody said, well, how come you don't let us know ahead of time? Well, because I want your ass in Los Angeles on those dates. You know, think about it. I mean, it really – it's a four-day event. You know, I mean, there's really only one other four-day event, and that's Roth in March. So you have to have the stamina necessary to kind of to kind of go through the motions. But as as my friend always says, he says, if you play these three days correctly, you'll get ahead by three months. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the most prescient way of you know the most intelligent way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. There are guys that'll do 45 to 60 meetings. And be exhausted. You won't even see them at the conference because you're going table to table. But in the end, they'll feel fantastic because they just got to do something that they will not really be able to do for the rest of the year. Right. So the thing is, you know, Thanksgiving, get rested, you know, eat more than you should, you know, spend a couple days off and then be ready for, for what is our 10th main event. Chris, as always, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. And uh, we really look forward to a great event. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you, brother. You guys be well. You too. Thank you all for tuning in to the Planet Microcap podcast. And thank you, Chris, again for coming on to the program. You can access the podcast by going on to stocknewsnow.com under podcast. Go to podbean.com and search Planet Microcap podcast or on iTunes and search Planet Microcap podcast. Stay tuned for the next Planet Microcap podcast, where I'll have our next guest to discuss all things microcap. If you have any questions or comments about the podcast, please send an email to info at stocknewsnow.com. I'd love to hear from all of you. This podcast has been brought to you by SNN Incorporated, publishers of stocknewsnow.com, the official microcap news source, and the microcap review magazine. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and thank you again for joining me on the Planet Microcap podcast. Have a great week, everyone.